Uh, thank you for coming. My name is Wayne. I'm founder, uh, president, and CTO of Armrise Technologies. Um, I'm very surprised that you guys know that uh, there's going to be this talk. And I am very sorry that the original talk uh, got pulled and we couldn't do it. Uh, Jack Yu holds most of the uh, material for the original talk. So today we're going to be talking about drive exploit, circumventing automated and manual detection of browser exploits. There's a lot of slides, so I'm going to go right into it. So let's take a look at one type of browser exploit, the drive, uh, the drive by download type of exploit. Drive by downloads are uh, attacks where hackers distribute malware by poisoning legitimate websites. What's typical is uh, an attacker would inject malicious iframes into HTML content. And the affected website essentially becomes a delivery mechanism for malware. It ap appears normal. And the victim do not need to click or agree to anything. They would simply, uh, simply connect into the website, excuse the attack. Uh, for example, Aurora, that happened uh, earlier this year. Um, it was using the IE zero day. It was confirmed publicly by Google, Adobe, Juniper, and Rackspace. And a total of 34 organizations were targeted. And Aurora was a typical drive by download attack. DNF 666, mass SQL injection, started since March 2010. Uh, ended, uh, the last wave happened about three, four weeks ago. Uh, and it was using initially an Adobe Zero Day. Uh, and the victims included Wall Street Journal, Jerusalem Post. And uh, in the past, it happened to CNN, GameSpot, US Treasury, Sony PlayStation, Washington Post. So let's dissect drive by downloads. The visitor, what happens is, the visitor visits an exploit server, which serves him a page plus a driver exploit. And then there's a payload, uh, which we call the downloader. And all of these exist in the form of JavaScript, and often obfuscated JavaScript. So the obfuscated version looks somewhat like this. And here's the actual exploit. To exploit the visitor's machine without him uh, knowing that anything had happened. Um, and so we call these exploits and droppers. The dropper executes, connects to a malware server, and fetches back the actual malware that gets installed in the victim's machine. And then the actual malware connects to the controller. OK, so the question here is, who would visit this uh, exploit website? So the key now is traffic. And so the attacker would go in and uh, break into very big and popular websites with a lot of traffic. For example, YouTube, Amazon, et cetera. And these websites usually would then in their legitimate page include a piece of JavaScript that generate uh, URLs. We call those URL generators. So the URL generators would then dynamically generate either an iframe or a JavaScript source pointing to the exploit server. Um, so from May to June, and the way to do that is, for example, mass, mass SQL injections, uh, massively using SQL injection vulnerabilities that exist in websites. In May to June, we saw uh, mass scale shared hosting compromise. And these included GoDaddy, Rackspace, Network Solutions, Bluehost, and Dreamhost. And uh, such an attack can be coupled with targeted attacks. So again, 
uh, mass SQL injection is hosting compromise, uh, directly, they can directly embed the malicious script inside HTML, PHP, or ASP, or uh, nowadays inside WordPress files, so it makes these injected content very hard to find. Uh, sometimes, like uh, the recent incidents, they were injected into database uh, stored procedures or um, database-related code uh, with WordPress or Joomla, which makes them very hard to extract, to find, and to remove. And then there are two other types of attacks that inject this uh, that we saw a lot in the past, especially in Asia. Uh, and it requires no tampering of websites. When it happens on the lane, we typically see ARP spoofing uh, using a tool like ZX ARPS. This tool uh, is very easy to use. It makes itself main in the middle in your lane using ARP spoofing. And so uh, when, you, when, when, you, when people tell you that your, web, your website is serving malicious scripts, you go in and check all the content and there's no malicious script. Uh, and that's because they have not changed your website, but they have compromised your lane and there's a tool acting as me in the middle. And then there's also a WAN uh, me in the middle. And that happened, for example, early March last year. It happened in the middle of the route for uh, tw.msn.com, taiwan.cnet.com, and others, what happened was in the middle of the route, a network device was compromised. Most of the traffic, uh, because uh, tw.msn.com is in Singapore, but it's accessed uh, mostly from Taiwan. And so in the middle of the route, where most of the traffic goes through, one of the network devices was compromised, and it was injecting these malicious scripts into the packet and sending them back. Okay, so now we're going to do a demo. Sorry. So I'm going to copy this URL. It's a dig URL. And usually what happens when users view this dig URL is you would be taken onto a dig page and you would see uh, the dig content and, 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 and uh, who dug it and the comments, et cetera. Now, if, you, if we use the same URL, And we paste it into our Internet Explorer. Oops. Okay, sorry. Got to start mid exploit first. So this is try exploit. We're going to start it. OK, this is how to uh, start our console. And if you need uh, the source code, it is already available now at www.drivesploit.org. Uh, now we've started the exploit. And let's just go exploit. OK. And that would start the exploit. And now, as you can see down here, Uh, it's trying to access zcrack.org right here, which, which it's not supposed to. What happens is the browser crashes, 
We go to the console again. And we see that we've started um, an interactive session with Meterpreter. So we can interact with the session. We can list out the processes. We can list the files. And then we can further then inject uh, malware into this system. So let's just kill ourselves. So that we terminate this connection. And we'll restart. Okay. So, but what happens? What happened uh, when we visited zcrack.org? So if you look into this, uh, the source code of zcrack, uh, uh, of dig.com, Oh, I'm sorry. What happened when we visited dig.com? Because it's a legitimate page. So here you can see um, it actually includes an iframe pointing to zcrack.com. Okay? So in this demo, in uh, Dig.com has fixed this vulnerability already, uh, but this uh, we injected this script before they fixed the vulnerability. So we used a persistent cross-site scripting vulnerability of uh, Dig.com to inject this piece of JavaScript, which then causes the browser to load content from zcrack.com, which is a malicious domain owned by us, which then exploited the browser and served uh, Metasploit. Okay, so a bit uh, of motivation behind Drivesploit. Uh, we provide solutions to, that detect malicious content in websites. Uh, that's a part of Omri's solutions offerings. And we use multiple behavior and signature-based technologies. Uh, most technologies are developed on our own, but we also integrate with antivirus, whose licenses are very expensive. And so we spend a lot of time testing our own technologies and selecting antivirus technologies. The key is how good are we and them at detecting new drive-by downloads? And so we ended up writing, uh, studying a lot of drive-by downloads and writing a lot of server-side script to mimic uh, the hacking tool's behavior in turning an existing exploit, for example, uh, Aurora, or for example, the reason uh, Adobe Zero Day, and turning that into a new exploit, exploiting the same vulnerability, but that bypasses antivirus detection. So then we figured out we need a good framework to help us replicate, refine, and manipulate exploits found in the wild. And so drive, drive exploit is born on top of Metasploit. Uh, in this type of attack, as you can see, the URL generators are JavaScript. Uh, the exploits and drivers are JavaScript too. The uh, malware is our PE binaries. So the malware part is often uh, easier to detect due to two reasons. One, antivirus uh, technologies are inherently better at detecting PE uh, malware. And second is because these uh, these PE binaries get written to disk, and that's an obvious behavior uh, to catch when, uh, when you're monitoring for your system security. And, the, so, uh, and so the playground is script languages. Why? Because we want to develop technologies, and we want to select good technologies that can detect these JavaScript threats. Because when your website or when a customer's website is injected with malicious JavaScript, uh, maybe three days later, the actual uh, server that's serving the malware or the domain is already taken down. And so if the detector relies purely on PE binaries,